Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Morning Coffee with Mike. Today, we're going to be discussing how to handle gap downs, how to handle massive gap downs. In fact, there's one stock that has been uh, a huge talk on Twitter and stock twits, even here on Instagram too. It's just across social media. The the stock, the, the ticker symbol is CRDO. The name of the company is Credo Technology. And the reason why it's been discussed all over the place is because yesterday it gapped down 40 Five percent, and so many people were talking about this, particularly among the the people that uh, that I tend to to follow too. A lot of people that are uh, that know about CanSlim, a lot of people that follow growth and momentum stocks. A lot of people were taking a look at this trade, and they were in this trade, and so. Whether you were in CRDO or not understanding how to prepare for this kind of a of a move here let, let me let me see if i can switch this around yeah see so this was crdo i've got some some stuff marked up on the chart but that was the move yesterday morning right so imagine you're you bought somewhere around here you're riding this uptrend and then all of a sudden you wake up to this right that that's that's not not too poor connection. Okay, looks like looks like we're back. All right, so I want to talk to you guys about how you can prepare for a move like that because the reality is that unless if you are a day trader or a scalper where you are not holding positions overnight, uh, you're, that's going to happen to you. So if you are a swing trader, if you are intermediate term, longer term, you will have a stock that will have a move like that. It's going to happen. Um, so what, the way to get ready for it is to plan ahead, right? So we're going to be discussing that. Uh, we don't have a guest for today. So if you want to go live with me, then just click the button down below and request to go live and I'll bring you live uh, in a minute. Uh, also, uh, we you can schedule yourself to come live with me. There is a link in my bio, depending where, if you're watching this live right now, uh, obviously you guys are, but later on for, for those watching the recording, uh, I also put a link down in the Spotify descriptions. Yes, we're on Spotify and also uh, on YouTube as well. So just click that link. Uh, it's a Calendly link. Schedule a time for yourself and we'll get it going. So let's again walk through this trade here. All right. So, uh, I, I first zoomed out and, and I was looking at this trade. Let me bring my mouse over here and, and start to, to zoom out at this thing. And, uh, I was kind of surprised that this trade was not on my radar because so, with so many people that trade similarly to me, uh, trading this stock, uh, I, Thought that it would pop up on my screens, but it didn't. There were a few reasons why it didn't quite meet the fundamental characteristics uh, that I look for. But um, let's pretend that it did pass it. Uh, I would look at this, uh, this setup here, and I probably would have bought this because uh, it was setting up in this uh, volatility contraction pattern. If you zoom out again, Let's take some of the annotations off. You see how you have a large contraction over here. Price action is wide and loose over there. And then it's slightly less and then slightly less over here. And you're starting to get a little tightening right there. That's where I like to enter on these little tight areas right there. And also right over there, if you take a look at this line down there, that's the relative strength line versus the S&P 500, it's one way that I tell that a stock is a leader. So I would be interested in this and I would have entered at around $15.25. That's just above that high right there. And when I was looking at, well, where would I place my stop, right? Because uh, the reality the reality is that we're not going to be right on every single trade. So we need to plan ahead 
where we will place our stop loss and cut the trade short if it doesn't work out. So for me, that place would have been at $14.25. That's right below that low there. In fact, well, why don't I zoom in a little bit more now that we're talking about the setup here. Okay, so I would have my stop right below there. So price takes off, right? Price takes off immediately. And the way that I like to handle uh, trades is to start scaling out right away. So I like to scale out at... Uh, about one times my average gain and then twice my average gain. And that's that's a moving target because our average gain will be different over different periods of time. So if we take a look at, say, a month's time, right? Uh, how we did in January might be a little bit different than how we do in February. And how we do in February might be a little bit different than how we did say back in December. So you want to track that every single month. For me, my average gain has been about 7%. So that means that I want to be taking gains quicker. So I, uh, for this trade, well, what I, and for recent trades, I've been taking gains at four and a half percent and at 9%, I'll take my scale outs there. So on this trade, I would have been out of half of it, right? I would have taken off some right about there. And then on day two, right somewhere right around here. Then I have a third gain that I like to take. I like to take what I call the high watermark. The high watermark is the the level that trades run to, uh, like the highest spot that my average gains tend to, to run to before they pull back and uh, and stop me out. Well, what's the highest price that they go? Lately, for me, that's been about 15% uh, through January. So I would be looking to take off another piece of the trade right up here. So at that point, I'm out of 75% of the trade, and it's just the last quarter of the trade that I'm going to let run for as far as it possibly could go until it stops me out or gives me some other reason to sell. So with that in mind, I would have been holding that last quarter through this, and I would have gotten nailed right down here, and I would have lost 45% on that last piece of the trade. But here's how the math can start to really work in your favor. Uh, we did this yesterday with our VIPs. Well, we did this math. And so with those scale outs of uh, at 4.5%, at 9%, at 15%, and how I'm sizing each one of those, right? So I'll take off half by I get by the time I get to that 9%. Then I'll take off a a half of a half, right? So a quarter at that 15%. And it's just that last quarter of the original trade that I'm going to let run on that gap down. My average price for all the different sales was $15.30. So here's where, here's what it looks like on the chart. I entered at $15.25, theoretically, if I had taken this, I wasn't actually in this trade. My, with all those cells on the way up, including this one, my average price at the end of it was $15.30. So by scaling out on the way up, by selling into strength on the way up, I was able to break even, even though that happened. So that's... A very important reason why you need to learn how to sell into strength and scale out of trades on the way up. Take gains while they're there. It's not just about locking in your gains. It's also going to protect you for the handful of times that something like that's going to happen. Maybe that happens to you once a year. If you're if you're lucky, it only happens to you once a year. If you're uh, pretty astute, it, it happens to you maybe once every two years. But just by managing your trades in this way, you're going to end up locking down a lot more gains. You're going to be mitigating a lot more losses, and it's really going to help you. So I wanted to, to give you that tidbit on how to handle uh, big 
gap downs like what we just saw in CRDO and the way to handle it is in the preparation. So let me know what questions you guys have. Uh, let me scroll through the, the chat here. Let's see. Uh, Ali, is this volume trading? I use volume in my trading. Uh, it's an important part, but I'm not only looking at volume. I look at price and its relation to the volume. So let's uh, let's take a look at this chart again. All right. So here's a chart. You can see that volume volume is down here, and so you can see how volume is through the roof on that day. So let's zoom. Let's get that off. Right. So it could. Oh, there, there's a few different volume spikes on this. All right, so zoomed in on this. So you see how price is consolidating over here? And let's take off all the annotations. It's a little too noisy. So you see how price is consolidating over here and uh, you have price coming down. And for the most part, volume is really drying up down here. Right? Do you guys see that? What that's signaling is that uh, supply is not coming to market as it's being sold off over here. That's a good thing. When price starts to move higher and volume starts to increase, that's showing you demand, right? So there's heavy duty demand coming up on the right side of this. Just as price is getting back above that red line right there, that red line is the 50 day moving average. That's a very important moving average. That's one that a lot of the big institutions like to pay attention to. So when price crosses back above there and starts to run and then it pulls back, you see that little pullback right there. It doesn't look like much, but uh, that's uh, a lot. It pulls back and volume is super duper light relative to that run-up. So as it's moving sideways right there and it starts to break out, that's why I would be looking to get in on that spot because it, it pulled, it started to run up, it has the momentum, it pulls back, volume is light, and then that's what creates the high reward to low risk entry point. And also makes it a bit more high probability. Let's see, what, what other questions do we have here? We've got three minutes before we call it a wrap. There are these uh, morning coffees with Mike. Uh, they're, they're 15 minutes long. So we try to get in as much as we can in this 15 minutes. Let's see, scrolling through. A lot of people joining us today. Welcome all. Thanks for tuning in. And again, if you want to schedule a time to go live with me uh, and we could chat about Whatever trading challenges you're experiencing, just click the link in my bio, schedule a time for yourself, and we, we do these Monday through Friday. They're always going to be Monday through Friday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. So click the link in my bio and schedule a time for yourself. All right, here's a question about uh, the indicators on my screen. So it, it looks like I've got a lot of indicators over here, All right? So, so let, let, let's walk, walk you through some of these here. I, I, I still have the annotations off. I, I like to draw all over the charts when, uh, when I find something that I like. But as far as the indicators go, uh, we've got price here, right? So those are the price bars. We've got volume. Uh, this squiggly line right there, that is the relative strength line versus the S&P 500. The reason why that's so important is because it's telling me how this stock is performing relative to S&P 500, right? Uh, duh. But the, the reason why it, uh, I like to look at that is because it's telling me if this stock is leading, right? I want to be in leading stocks, stocks that are beating the market, because those are going to be the ones that uh, have the best chance for success one of the qualities. Um, this up here, these are the stochastics. And I actually prefer to buy when the stochastics are turning up. A lot of people will see the stochastics moving up like this and say, oh, it's overbought. I don't want to touch it. That's true. But when you see the stochastics turning up at key junctures like this, when price is consolidating, and tightening up and getting ready to turn out, it's also a sign of momentum, that there's a lot of momentum coming into that. So, so I actually take that as a very positive sign. I take it as something that's a, a what I would call a booster. Uh, let's see what else. There's a whole bunch of moving averages on here. So I've got the five, 
10, 21, 50, 100, and 200 EMAs on here. Uh, well, what else? Oh, the, these these little dots here, that's uh, the ants, right? It's uh, one that U.S. investing champion David Ryan came up with. And when those ants show up, it shows that certain criteria are met in relation to momentum, volume, and price. Just shows that there's a, a lot of momentum uh, in that stock at that time. So just a few things that I like to keep on there. Uh, the the thing well with indicators, you don't want to go too crazy with them. Um, a handful will do. And uh, one other thing is that if you are using indicators, and indicators are great, uh, they're very useful, but the, what makes them useful is the consistent use of them. So I wouldn't... Uh, have some things on and then take it off and then use some other things. That's when you start to get confused. Find ones that, that work for you, ones that you like, and stick with those. The way that I found out about the ones that I like, studying masters, modeling their success, uh, incorporating other indicators as I studied over time and uh, tested them out, liked certain things, didn't like other things, tossed the ones that I didn't like, and that's kind of how it goes. So anyway, we are out of time. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, uh, let me know. And if you'd like to be on a future morning coffee with Mike, then click the link in my bio, schedule a time for yourself. Or if you're watching the recording of this, click the link down in the description and schedule a time again, Monday through Friday, uh, 930 AM Eastern. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Much love. Peace out.